Hello, and welcome to One Voice Live, where we talk about one voice, what it is, and how it fits into the world of singing. I am your host, Alex Ito, and today we are continuing our series on how to build a vocal practice. The last time Michael Moreska joined us, we did part one, which is where we really dived into the overall structure of it, uh, as far as how often to show up and for how long. And today is part two, where we're really digging into what do you do once you get there to get the most out of your vocal practice. So to get into this today is creator of One Voice, Michael Moreska. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Ooh, yeah. And by the oh. end of today, you will know how to do that. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. That was uh, wow. I got scared once I started and I was like, oh, I can't stop now. You just got to keep going. Yeah. You jumped off. You're in the run. <laughs> yeah. Once you're in, you just got to keep going. When in doubt, rip out. Um, yes. I'm so excited to talk about this. And what a, what a lovely, um, what a lovely show that was with, uh, Logan last week, um, so many wise words and such great insight into a practice. And I think that's the thing that we, I wanted to say um, initially was um, that I think this is the part of, of, of voice work that we never get to see, you know, like we never get to look behind the curtain. And I think that's such a huge bummer because we all just believe or think or and or told that singing should just be great from the get go. And so then we have this feeling that we should be awesome at it right away. And if we're not, well, then we shouldn't waste any time because we're obviously no good. And that's such a, a travesty, I think, for, for most people because they stop before they ever start. Absolutely. Uh, such a bummer. That just reminded me of a video that Jesse J posted. I think it was probably a couple years ago uh, that went viral. And it was her basically giving us a peek behind the curtain. She was trying to sing some Beyonce song, I think. I think it was Listen. Don't quote me. Uh, I'll try and find the video to post it. But it was her practicing and completely failing, like failing over yes. and over again, like her pitch accuracy, her weight was failing and she was just working. And then you see that Jesse J is like an, an incredible beast, but like but she has to work too. Yeah, she has to work too. Yeah. So that was such That's a cool perfect. thing that I thought she did. Please add that to the description. Uh, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited to take us to the next, um, to the next step. Uh, like Alex said, it's now taking um, a look at what happens once you get to your actual practice time. Um, and so for that, we're going to talk about the one voice vocal workflow. Um, one voice vocal workflow is <clears throat> a product of. <laughs> Uh, I'll say at least several years of exploration. And if we wanted to count the years before that of me just kind of not understanding why we did it, um, we could add that too. But then on, the, the real stuff is like three years um, of starting to cultivate what a practice is, how to understand it, what's missing, why do we practice, what do we do in a practice, what does it actually look like if you break it all down. Um, and that is what the one voice vocal workflow is. Uh, and what it shows us is it shows us from start to finish uh, what an entire process looks like in getting ready for an audition, a show, a workout, et cetera. <clears throat> and how do you how do you open that up? How do you close that? Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to share that. Um, can we dive in? Let's do it. I'm ready. OK, great. So let's start. Uh, Alex, could you pull up uh, the workflow graph? And by the way, today specifically, everyone, we're going to be. Um, after I talk about the graph, we're going to first talk about um, the one voice vocal workflow kind of in its entirety. Um, and Alex in just a second is going to show you a, a graph, a chart rather. Um, and then I'm going to focus in on the first and the fourth phase. And we're going to talk a little bit about warm ups and cool downs uh, and why that's not really something we often use as a word anymore um, in our world. And so I want to share that with you here today. So here we go. Let's take a look at the chart first. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now you guys are looking at the chart. Um, in the chart, um, we have to first ask ourselves, you know, what do we do first? And the first thing people say is, they, well, I warm up. And I often ask, all right, so you warm up. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, I, I just get my voice going. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, you know, I, I, I do some scales, I do some lip trills, and then I do some ha-ha-has, and then I do some sirens, and then I sing through this... Um, the CD that my teacher gave me 14 years ago or that I bought online, the ultimate warm up. And, uh, then I, um, and then I'm ready, right? Sometimes I don't feel ready. Okay. Well, why don't you feel ready? I don't know. You know, I just, you know, it just takes time. So the issue is, 
is what you're looking at right now is I want you all to pay attention to um, the peak. Where does the peak occur? And you'll notice that there's actually two phases before we ever even get to the peak. Sadly, what happens, and then of course it tapers off uh, after that peak. Sadly, what happens to most uh, vocalists is uh, you've probably never experienced this before. Um, Alex, you can go ahead and pull me back up for just a second. Um, you've probably never experienced this before where you are, um, you're going through and you know you've got your, your recording session today or your uh, audition. It's at, you know, 2 p.m. And so you say to yourself, okay, great, 2 p.m. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to um, I'm going to I'm going to go and wake up uh, early. I, I normally wake up at eight. Today I'm going to wake up at six. Great. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out. You know, for an hour, hour and a half. Come back, take a shower, steam it, steam it. Then I'm going to get then I'm going to get warmed up. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get ready. So you warm up. Maybe sing through the song for you know five six times. Um, you're like, okay, I think I'm ready now. Look at the clock. It's about it's about um, it's about 9 a.m. Great, two o'clock. Okay, <clears throat> I got plenty of time. Mm, mm, <laughs> brrr, woo! <clears throat> 9:15. Feel good. Great. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm just gonna get ready. I'm gonna get ready. <clears throat> uh, what was it 9:45? Great. Uh, huh, mm, go. <clears throat> Great. Mm. Great. Feels really good. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. 10 o'clock, great, cool. And this keeps happening over and over and over and over and over and over. And then you get on the train or you get in your car and you're driving. <clears throat> I'm defying gravity. <clears throat> and then here you go, here you go again, great. And now, now you get to the audition and everyone's waiting and it's quiet and you're like, you know, I'm just, I, uh, I need to go to the, the restroom. I'll be right back. And you get in the restroom. Of course, what do we hear? We we hear uh, we hear this. Ho! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, I was just coughing. There was something in my throat. Uh, sorry, I was just you know, <clears throat> yeah, I was just clearing my throat and about. Sorry, I just yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go uh, get ready. And so you go sit outside. And then by the time you get to the audition, you do the audition or you do your recording session. Except you're already tired. You're already wiped out. Could you go and bring up the uh, chart again for us, Alex? So what's happened to you? Well, what's happened is that in this case, you actually are starting your gig or your audition after the third phase. You're actually starting it after you peaked, which is really a huge bummer because you've already wiped your voice out. What you've really done is you've actually done a workout and you've done a workout and you've already peaked. And it's such a bummer because we've all experienced it. You finally get to the audition. Your voice just wasn't as good as it was this morning. It wasn't as good as it was three hours ago after you used it 375 more times, <laughs> right? It's weird. And we think about it and we're like, what's happening? And that's because we don't have a good way to organize the work that we do or the effort that we put into building or working on our voice. And so this is where the vocal workflow helps us to begin to organize all these different facets of our voice. Um, in terms of what we're using when, what kinds of exercises, what tools are we using, when should we use them, how long should I use them, um, and what types of tools should I use and when. Uh, and so this helps us put all of that into perspective. So what I want to share with you all now is I want to give you the, the goals uh, for each of these phases. Uh, if you're at home, write this down, or you can take a screenshot of this, um, but write this down. You've got four phases. Phase one, the goal is to relax. Phase two, the goal is to prep or prime your voice for what it's about to do. Phase three is to uh, is the workout phase. And the goal is to exhaust your voice or maintain. And finally, phase four is about relaxation, which is the same as phase one. Now you notice I'm not using a term that we generally call, uh, you hear generally as warm up or cool down. The problem when people say warm up, and I know it's a super common phrase, I even struggle to not say it sometimes. But the reason I worked really hard to steer myself away from saying a warm up is because when we talk about a warm up, it's a super generalized um, uh, span of time. Right? It could be anything. It could take you 45 minutes, it could take you an hour, it could take you 10 minutes. And why is it that there's some people who can um, 
warm up, uh, starting by working out and then steaming really well and then uh, warming up for 30 minutes. And it takes them all of that to warm up. And there's someone else who can roll out of bed and do the same thing and they're totally fine. What's the difference? Um, and why does this person seemingly have to do all that? And in most cases, uh, what we found, which is super interesting, um, I started doing these uh, warm-up experiments with the seniors here at Texas State uh, a couple years ago, and they hated me for it. They loved me and hated me at the same time for <laughs> it. Um, and I love you all, and thank you for doing them. Uh, what I did is I made them uh, have an audition at 8 a.m. They had to get up, and they had to prepare for an 8 a.m. audition. And I was there, and they would come in the audition, and they would have a talk back afterwards. And what I learned about it was super interesting. I had people who got up at like five in the morning, who went running, who did this whole thing, uh, this whole uh, routine to get ready to do their thing. They came in, they sang. I had other people who woke up at like 7.30 and just put on clothes, did a few things, and then showed up and sang. They both actually sang fairly well. Um, there wasn't a massive difference between them, which is really interesting and probably really frustrating for the people who got up at 5 a.m. The question is why? Why did that happen uh, to them? And um, what we learned is that this whole concept of getting your voice ready is more about cognitive awareness uh, than it is working muscles over and over and over and over and over. Uh, the process of repetition, if you think about it in a workout, uh, like going to the gym, that's really the workout. <laughs> when you start doing something in repetition over and over and over, you're generally doing that because you're now in a workout. You've moved from the phase where you were getting your body going uh, to now doing the actual work. Um, so I, I, I want to um, I want to talk a little bit more about that, but in just a moment, I'm going to pause and we're going to get to that just a little bit more. So let's talk for a second. Um, about why, let's talk about these, these little phases, their goals, and then why they're important, yeah? Uh, and then we're gonna dig in a little bit deeper into phase one and phase, phase one and phase four. Um, so let's pretend that I'm going to the gym today and <clears throat> uh, let's move out of the world of singing for just a moment. I'm gonna go to the gym and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I get up in the morning and I say, you know what, I don't, I don't have time, I don't have time, I just need to get to the gym. Uh, whew, let's see, today, today, what am I gonna do? You know what, I, I'm, I just gotta get straight into it. Let's go, I'm gonna start bench pressing 150 pounds, let's go, let's do this, get in, get in, I'm getting there, let's do this, let's do this, perfect, great, great. So here you are, you've been lifting, right? And and you didn't notice, but just to get the get the weight up, you, you ended up you ended up tightening here, but that's fine. You know, I don't have time because my schedule's really tight. I just got to get home. I got to shower, go to bed, right? And, and you know, it's great, everyone. It's great because we all know that when we sleep, we all fully relax our bodies, right? Like you just go to sleep and everything releases. You wake up fully released. No, that's not what happens ever. In fact, in your rest, you're maybe running from like a like a gorilla that's chasing you through the woods with a hatchet. That's horrible. I've never dreamed that before. But that happens, and you wake up, and now you roll out of bed, and oh my god, ah, huh, my 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 back. Whoa, what is that? Ah, and you're fighting. It's fine. I don't have time. I gotta get. I gotta get it. So you get there, and now you're here, and now you get in, and you start working out again, right? And what occurs when you work out? What what does that bring into your body? It brings tension, right? So my body now is taking on more and more tension the more and more I work it out. So you wonder why you see these people who come from the gym and they look like this, their shoulders are in their ears is because they never take the time to release them. That's what phase one and phase four are all about. They're about getting your body and voice to start from a neutral place uh, muscularly. That's the whole goal. And so if we can get our body to start from a place neutrally, then we move into uh, the workout, the prep and the workout. And then when we're done, because now we've accrued tension from the workout, now we release that all again. We keep, to ha we keep having this really kind of clean, what I would call a clean workflow, where we release all the tensions before we start, and then once we've accrued them, we release them again, so we leave the workflow uh, released, which is super cool. And uh, it creates a much more consistent uh, vocal experience. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, can you describe the the vocal equivalent of the person, the, like muscle builder, who doesn't do the physical equivalent of phase one and phase four? Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, some of you have felt this before. You've been in a, a rehearsal 
um, and uh, and or you went to go sing in the studio for a little while or, or in a rehearsal with the band and you go to sing and you sing for a lot that night and you're singing some either heavyweight stuff or really loud things even if they're lightweight and you just kind of get pooped like you go through and you're just like wow like I am I am just wiped out you go to bed the next day you get up, you don't do anything because because what is that? What am I going to do with cooling down? What is that? We've heard about that, but that, no one ever explains what cooling down is. Like you should just cool down, whatever that means. Um, I mean, we could be real, right, people? Right? Like everyone talks about cooling down, no one does it, and no one ever explains what it is. We just all pretend like everyone should know it and does it, but no one does because no one knows what it is. So we go home, and you get up the next day, and then what happens to you? You end up. Uh, trying to sing, you're like, God, my voice isn't as, uh, it feels very thick today. I feel very, very like I'm trying to hit those pitches and my agility is just a little lower than it normally is. And it's because you've accrued a lot of tension. There's some other things that can happen to this guy, right? Vocally, um, your voice, and this is why laryngeal, laryngeal uh, masseuses exist. You can get laryngeal massages or release, what they call it. It's very awesome. Um, and, uh, um, it is a super awesome thing to do. If you have the opportunity to do it, do it. So awesome. But what it is, is they go in and they massage around your legs, but also some muscles up in the pop, top part of your vocal tract. So they take gloves, they get in there. It's really quite intense. Um, but um, the whole point is, is that my body has accrued so much tension that I've never released that as I start to accrue other tensions so much, it can inhibit the movement or the freedom of movement of my larynx. And so your larynx is actually this kind of floating apparatus here, right? And if the muscles here, the muscles here get so tight that the muscles around your larynx or the apparatus itself can no longer move uh, very efficiently or very well, what you'll find is you'll find as a singer, you'll find that your ability to maneuver or move, no, move between one note or another or sing loud or quiet becomes impeded, becomes much harder. In some cases, <clears throat> some people have gotten to the place where they actually can't phonate. They can't make sound. They get really scared, and then they start doing stuff that's releasing and relaxing. And suddenly, oh my gosh, my voice is back. And that's because all those tensions that were so tight and inhibiting the vocal cords from actually vibrating because of how it was pulling on the larynx in a specific way, now have been relieved. And so now the muscles can, the vocal cords can now phonate again. Uh, yeah, does that does that clarify that? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, thanks for that's a great question. So. Um, that's kind of what we're, we're looking at and experiencing with our voices is in that entire, uh, in those four phases, what we're really looking for is we're really looking for a clean in and a clean out of that workflow or of our practice, I guess we could say. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the workflow um, before we talk to some more of the specifics in uh, warm-ups and in cool downs and why we don't use those terms anymore. Um, let's take a look again um, at the workflow. So Starting at phase one, this is now phase one is our goal is to relax. That's the goal. So we're going to do anything that we can to relax. Now, guys, that can be anything from from massaging your shoulders to massaging your larynx uh, to massaging your jaw, whatever relaxes you. That's what you're going to do. Now, what I'm not talking about is like, well, I, I take a bath. That's that's great. But you can't have a bath with you everywhere. Um and, uh, and so the goal is to do something that helps you release the muscles around or surrounding your larynx or on your larynx, uh, your skull, your jaw, um, uh, inside of your vocal tract, uh, your shoulders, your rib cage, lower back for some people, abdominals, all these muscles, just releasing them. That could be yoga stretches. That could be physical manipulation, which is massaging, squishing. You get a roll, you get a foam roll and roll it out. And I guarantee you, you will feel so much better. Uh, and your apparatus, everything will feel like it just has more freedom to move, which is, of course, what we want, right? Um, our aim, uh, ultimately, in most cases, I think I should I should say, I think the aim in most cases for most vocalists or performing artists uh, is to set themselves up in the most optimal position for success. It doesn't make it right. It just makes it optimal. Yeah. Um, and so um, 
this is where it kind of begins. And it begins in phase one with looking for that relaxation. Now we move into phase two. In phase two, the prep of the prime is the goal. Well, what am I prepping or priming for? I'm prepping or priming my voice for what I'm about to do. So what am I about to do? Well, today I'm going to work on my contemporary musical theater. Or I'm going to work on a rock song that I'm singing in my band. Okay, great. Now I've got to ask myself, well... What does that require of me? When I go and I, I sing like that, what does that require of me? Well, if I'm gonna be singing a rock song, I'm gonna sing uh, with heavy weight. Uh, I'm probably gonna distort my vocal tract. Um, I am probably going to do a lot of straight tones. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm not pushing too much air or bouncing um, my weight. Um, and depending on the kind of rock, maybe there's a riff in there, maybe not. Um, so I might wanna play with all those different things. So now that I know that, I'm gonna do tools, song snippets, scales, and I'm gonna focus on singing them with these five things in mind. So, for example, if I'm gonna be singing that rock song, um, a lot of people think that they have to do scales. And what I realized a long time ago was that if I wanted to get better at singing scales, I should probably sing more scales. But if I wanted to get better at singing songs, I should probably sing songs. So what I discovered is that I could actually take a song snippet and I could use that to help my voice get ready or prepare it for what it was about to do. So for example, if I was gonna sing, um, if I was gonna sing, uh, well, I don't know how to play, but I, if I was gonna sing, um, oh, maybe I can follow through. If I'm gonna sing that, then I'm gonna ease into that uh, with weight and volume. Guys, very important. Always ease in uh, to volume. Always ease into volume. We talked about this a little bit with dealing with damage, but um, just mm, I'm highlighting that here because it's in your workflow. Always ease into volume. Um, and what does that mean so now, to ease in? Uh, uh, thank you for clarifying. Um, uh, ease in by uh, incrementally increasing volume. Yeah, um, volume to the voice is what. I don't want to use a confusing, I don't want to confuse terms, but I think this is clear. Volume to the voice is what uh, weights at a gym are to a body. Um, it's, it's strenuous. You add more and more and more, it becomes more and more strain on the body. Uh, volume is exactly the same way for the voice. So you want to ease into it just as I wouldn't go, if today I'm going to go bench press and I'm going to try and max out, I'm trying to max out at 200 a day. Well, most people, even if they don't go to the gym, can agree that it's probably a bad idea to go straight to that 200 pounds. Why? Well, what am I doing? Why is it that people start at a lower rep or at a lower weight on the bar? Well, they start there because they're seeking form. That's what they're seeking. I want to make sure that I've got the form that I want before I go up to the more strenuous weight, or in this case for the voice, more strenuous volume, right? Well, what does form look like? It's those five things we just talked about. There may be specific things that I'm working on with my voice that I wanna make sure that I'm doing every time. Perhaps I'm someone who pushes too much air and I often imbalance my weight. So I'm probably working and focusing on not pushing so much air. Maybe sometimes when I'm trying to get a heavy weight, I always push too much air for that heavy weight. I wanna pull that back. Maybe I'm a person who, um, often sings with a really small vocal track and I'm working on making that a little bit more released, more of a neutral vocal track. Those are all things that I'm gonna focus on while I'm getting ready because it's about form. And remember how I talked about earlier about cognitive awareness, that it's mostly about cognitive awareness. You guys can think of your voice and your body like systems on an airplane. When you're getting it ready, what you're really doing is you're actually turning on each system and so if you forget to turn on a system, you'll actually get out and you'll start flying and you'll realize you forgot to turn on the left engine. And so because you didn't turn on the left engine, now the air's kind of, the, the plane's kind of lopsided and during flight now, you're having to figure out how to turn that system back on instead of turning all of that on in the preparation. Uh, and it doesn't take long. Um, it can take, uh, uh, with phase one and phase two together, you're probably looking at somewhere between 15 to 19 minutes total. And then you're ready. Let me say that again, everyone. 15 to 19 minutes total, and then you're ready. Because look, there's no reason for me to do large vocal track, uh, lightweight things, um, if I'm not gonna be singing uh, a legit or classical style today. It's a waste of my time. 
just as doing riffs and distorted vowels is a waste of my time if I'm going to be singing classical stuff today. So what you're going to find is that you're going to actually have multiple preps. Uh, which is really cool, really cool. You may have a prep for a specific character, a uh, specific voice that you're doing, uh, and you will definitely have different preps for different sort of genres of styles, um, which is really cool. Then we move into the workout. In the workout phase, now we've done our uh, phase one, which the goal is to relax, relaxation phase. Then we go into the prep phase. Now we're in the workout phase. There's two parts to it. And the two parts, or the two focuses rather, uh, are either to exhaust your voice or to maintain it. Exhaustion means what it says it is, which is to exhaust your voice. You will poop yourself out, which means you will feel tired and you will lack energy to continue singing. It doesn't mean you've done so much damage that you can't sing anymore. It means that you've actually exhausted your voice. And for any of you who have done a rehearsal for a while and you haven't sung in a while, you know what I'm talking about. And you're just literally physically and vocally done. You're like, you know what? I can't anymore. I'm wiped out. Not wiped out because I'm losing my voice. Different. Um, and so this is assuming, of course, that you're doing all happy things. You're not forcing coordinations. You know all those things. Um, the other side is, and, and by the way, exhaustion is where you will see true, um, you'll see real results. If you do exhaustion workouts, that's where you're going to see real change in your voice, which is really exciting. Um, on the other hand, with a maintenance uh, workout, what I'm doing is I'm not really seeking exhaustion. I'm not looking to build stamina or endurance. I'm not looking to do any of that. Well, all I'm doing is just trying to run through a couple of things in my in my rep um, that is either something from a different album or something I'm doing for a set or something that I want to make sure is in my musical theater repertory book um, that I haven't touched on in a while. So maybe I've been in a show that is a rock show. And I want to make sure that my classical stuff or my legit stuff stays on uh, stays on point. So I'm going to sing a couple of those songs once, maybe twice, and that's it. That's the end of the workout. And then finally, I get back to uh, I get to phase four, which again the goal is to relax. So let's break this down a little bit. Um, now I want to look at why I want to look at uh, warm ups and cool downs, and why we often don't uh, use these terms in the world of one voice. When someone says a warm up. What I talked about earlier when I gave you guys that example earlier is that a warm up could be something that starts at phase one and ends at the ends of phase uh, ends at the a uh, at the <laughs> ends at the end of phase three. Woo! Um, we did it. Quarantine. Quarantine. So it ends at the ends at the end of phase three, and that uh, is not appropriate <laughs> for what you're trying to accomplish. What would be great is that if we looked at that scenario again, what you would do is you would say, my audition is at 2 p.m. All right, um, it's going to take me 30 minutes to get there, so I'm going to leave by 1.30. And I've got to, um, now that I've got to leave by 1.30, uh, it's going to take me about roughly 20 minutes to uh, get ready uh, vocally for it. So now I'm going to start maybe around 1. I'll give myself a buffer, 30 minutes. So I'll start preparing myself at 1 o'clock. Now, this is assuming I've already dressed. I'm all that stuff. That's all I got to do. That's all I got to do. And so now, Alex, can you pull up the chart again? Mm -hmm. Now what's happened, everyone, is that I've gone through simply phase 1 and phase 2, and my voice hasn't peaked. I'm not exhausted. So when I go into the audition or the recording studio, I'm fresh. I'm ready to give it my best of my voice versus the ragged end of my voice after I've exhausted myself, which is at the end of phase three. So um, now I, I want to come back um, to chat about um, let's look at warm up and cool down. Let me say this about warm ups and cool downs. People say I'm just going to like warm up my voice. Well, let me be very clear. You cannot warm up. People talk about like warming up the sound. You cannot warm up sound. You cannot cool it down. Sound is a reaction of 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 um, of uh, what is this called? What do you call this when you hit things? Disruption. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for a D, and my brain was like D D D discernment disaster. Um, um, yeah, it's disruption. It's when I have the collision with my vocal cords hitting right. Um, and I'm bursting those molecules apart, all of that's happening, right? And I have that collision of the air molecules and I create sound. It's a reaction, it's a, um, it's a, it's a byproduct, right? And so when I think about cooling it down, that's not actually very helpful. Uh, I can't cool down sound, I can't heat it up, um, but what we really wanna do is we wanna get the muscles going and we wanna get them to a place where they're released, yeah? Before we get them going, 
So let me rewind. We want to get our muscles released and get our body into a neutral state, what I'll call a neutral state, which means relax. Um, and then when I'm done with my, with my workout, I also want to get my body and my voice muscles into a neutral state again or a relaxed state. So what are things that you can do for this? Um, and this is why we no longer call it warm up or cool down, just phase one, phase four, or we can call it the relaxation phase. Yeah. So in your workflow, you're going to seek to do something that relaxes you. So what is that? What do I do? Um, and Alex, I'd love for you to share things that you do as well, please. Um, a couple things that I do, and I don't, I don't actually, a lot of people will be, uh, a lot of people are often like, really? Um, when I tell them in phase one, my relaxation phase, I don't make any sound in me really in my relaxation phase. I only I only do external release, so I'll massage the sides of my larynx, I'll massage the muscles around around the structure of my larynx, underneath my chin, I'll massage my jaw, I'll massage my skull, I'll massage the back of my neck, the lower part of my neck, I'll massage, I'll wring out my ribs, uh, I'll massage my lower back. And then I'll do some a few like yoga poses to help me release my lower back, help me release the center of my spine. Um, those are things that I do to help me release my body. And you'll feel it. You all know what I'm talking about. The way you know what release feels like is it feels like, um, you know, when you just get on vacation or the week's over um, and you're like, oh, work, work, work. And then you're like, <sighs> and you can literally feel your body go, that's relaxation. And our aim uh, as performing arts, because we put ourselves in, um, sh I'll say, uh, stressful situations, uh, we tend to carry more uh, physical tension than we know. Um, and so it's a great way to constantly be checking in. So, yeah, Alex, what are things that you do in your practice uh, for your phase one? I feel that zoom feeling from yoga oftentimes, um, which sometimes if it's, if I'm in a rush, I'll do just like a quick version. If I can do like a whole like 15 minute flow, like that's awesome. Nice. Um, and yoga with Adrian on YouTube is my absolute favorite for anyone out there who's looking for something to, uh, to exercise during quarantine yoga with Adrian. Okay. She's everything. Um, <clears throat> and then I think also something I personally need is like a mental, a mental zoom. I don't know a better word for that. Mm -hmm. Just to say these, this next hour, nothing else i'm not worrying about anything else i'm just focused on mm -hmm. what's happening today yeah like right here what a beautiful way to say that yeah because it's like a i think you said this to me it's like a centering moment it's like a moment i was talking to someone about this and and uh, they were describing it was, it was really beautiful actually oh yeah actually yeah it's a friend that i was talking to the other day is um um talking about how phase one is a really beautiful kind of centering time uh, where you suddenly get present and you're not like, what am I, what would I have to do next? What do I have to do uh, in, 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 you know, two hours? That I've got to just, and oh my gosh, in, in the past, you know, I can't believe that they said that to me. And what am I doing? It just helps all that noise kind of calm down. Mm -hmm. So you can do the work that you need to do for that time. That's Absolutely. really beautiful. Love That's that also much. a really, trick really. for anything you have to do for any amount of time. Like anytime you need a rest, it doesn't have to be specific to a vocal practice. You can allow yourself for the next 20 minutes I'm just going to focus on this and not worry about the other things that are, Love. yeah. Life hack. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So yeah, as you, as you um, prepare, those are things that we do. Now here's the beautiful thing, everyone. Phase four is the same as phase one. They're both relaxation phases. So you've now accrued tension. Well, guess what you came into the workflow with? Tension. So all you're doing is working to release it again. So when you're done with your workout, now in phase four, you're going back into a relaxation phase where you're going to release everything again. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to massage my larynx, massage my jaw, release that. Um, I'm going to massage my lower back. I'm going to stretch, do a few little things um, just to release and find that jump feeling that Alex was talking about. And it's also another moment. Uh, like Alex said, to then kind of put a beautiful close on your uh, on your workflow for that day uh, and center in on what you're going to do next or what you need to do or taking time. Some people talk about this, which I think is really beautiful. They take a moment to reflect and they let everything kind of sink in uh, and process everything that they just did. And it's a great way to let the brain um, absorb everything it learned, uh, which is really cool. So 
that's phase one and phase four, the relaxation phases. Um, and I would say they're probably the most overlooked part because people want to rush by them or think they don't matter. But it's mostly because people don't know what they're for um, and what you should do. Uh, and so I hope that gives you all some clarity and gives you some food for thought with that stuff. Yeah. Do you also yeah. not create sound in phase four? No, correct. Really? Yeah, I used to. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> Me neither. I used to. Yeah, yeah, I, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> I used to, and then I realized, I thought, you know, why am I making sound? What I'm actually doing, I mean, consider that what we've been doing is we've been, our vocal cords have been spreading apart and hitting together now for our entire workout. We've been pulling and, and yoinking on the muscles in the larynx to make all the sound. My breathing apparatus is doing that. So what have I been using this whole time? These muscles over and over and over, right? Putting a lot of strain, stress on them. I've been doing that. So if I go into phase four, and then I use the muscles more, right? All I'm doing is using the muscles more again. And so what I started to realize is that, oh my gosh, and I did this with running too. I used to, you know, when I ran competitively when I was younger, um, what would we do? We would run around the track again. I actually never felt better after doing that. We just did it and you were, you're taught to do it. That's how you're gonna release the muscles. But I, I never felt a release. I was always tight. And I, what I really needed to do is I needed to take a moment to release and relax my muscles. I needed to massage and release because what I'm looking for is what you said, is I'm looking for, mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for. Um, so yeah. if we take away weight, because technically let's say I'm lifting at the gym, when I put the weight down and I'm stretching these muscles, isn't that the equivalent of still engaging the muscles just it, without as much weight? Because how Different. do the vocal cords get that st stretched out? Stretched out. They don't really. They don't really do the stretched out. Okay. Uh, it's more about the muscles surrounding the larynx to to release all of that. What we can get to in there, and then what we'll feel over the next you know twenty thirty minutes following our workout is we'll feel everything just release again, and you'll feel a, a good tell is that your speaking voice and everything goes back to what its neutral is. Uh, sometimes particularly after a loud workout or uh, something with heavy weight and loud, anything that's loud generally, uh, you'll like finish sometimes, people finish just a little bit, a little bit squeezier than they were, um, and you'll start to feel that dissipate. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the muscles, in terms of feeling that, um, oh, what did you just say? Say that again. I, I, I wanted to... Stretching out, using the same muscle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The assumption is that when you stretch, you're stretching relaxed muscles. But it's not necessarily true. A lot of times what people are doing is their muscles are actually very tight still, and they're still tensing them because they haven't actually relaxed. Um, this is what I started realizing when I started going through a lot of this in the last year. It's been a new discovery for me, last year and a half, it's been a new discovery for me, which has been realizing that uh, I often tense muscles that I'm stretching which when you think about it is really unhelpful. Mm -hmm. Now I would be considered in most people's eyes, at least back in my dancey days, like I was, I was fairly flexible and I still am pretty flexible for not doing that much. I don't really do that much with my body, um, which is, which is a tragedy and I want to do more. <laughs> and now that I'm quarantined, I have, I have the, I have the opportunity to do it. Um, but as I stretch, what ends up happening is I, I had this, Okay, I'm gonna tell you all this stupid story, everyone. Story time with Michael. Uh, what I what I <laughs> what I had done for a long time is I would randomly pull my right pinky toe. Now, that is a very painful feeling, and suddenly makes it difficult to walk uh, for like three days. It's awesome. This would happen to me randomly. Like I'd be I'd be squatting down to pet the dogs, or I would be, you know, doing something. And I'm squatting down, and you know, my pinky toe would go. My my foot is here, my pinky toe, and I'll do that. Oh, and just just like that, woo, and just like shock right through my foot. Ah, oh, so painful, so painful. Well, what I started to realize is I started to realize that actually every time that I was uh, kneeling down, what I started to do with my pinky toe is I started to push down. Well, I started to tense this muscle for my pinky toe, it tense down. And then what I would do is I would take my foot and I would lean forward and I would stretch it while I was tightening it. Yes, you can only imagine how great that felt. 
And I would do this, didn't know how I did it, didn't understand, didn't know what was happening. And then I, I, I started to do some body awareness stuff, which was really cool. Um, and what I found out that I was doing was I was tensing the muscle uh, while I was stretching it. And then I started to realize, I started stretching more and, and checking with my body and I started to realize that most of my stretching consisted of me tensing my muscles while pulling on them. Mm. And so like a lot of people, you all can try this at home right now. If you just do a deltoid stretch and the scapula, the muscle back with the trapezes here, you can actually try this at home. Take, take your arm, you put it across. You guys have done this in PE like a thousand times, right? Now everyone's like, ooh, I'm getting real stretch, real nice stretch. What a lot of you are doing right now, you don't even know it, is you're actually taking your trapezes and the muscles back here and you're tensing it and you're pulling your arm backwards. Watch what happens. Go ahead, let go of the center of your back. Release this muscle. Go ahead, see if you can let go of it. And you'll notice that you don't really get, for a lot of you, you don't really get much of a stretch at all, right? You don't really feel much because it's it's already malleable enough to move. This isn't actually very hard. But if you tense your, if you tense the muscle in your back and then you pull this, now you're forcing the muscle and tightening it and stretching it all at the same time. Why does it feel so good? <laughs> I know, right? It's more like a, it's more like a, it's more like a stretch. You know, when you get up in the morning, you're like, mm, stretch. This is not stretching. This is not stretching. We're tightening is what we're doing, but it feels good to tense a muscle every now and then, right? Mm -hmm. It gets the blood flowing. Um, so this is what I started to realize with the voice is that we would assume that what we were getting was relaxation by stretching. But what I started to realize is that I actually wasn't getting relaxation. And so I really needed to relax before I could stretch. I needed to relax before I could put strain on the muscle, which is what stretching is. Um, it's a strain on the muscle. It pulls the muscle. Um, so food for thought for all of you out there. Uh, Michael Theories. I'm excited to... I believe you and I trust you, but I'm excited to see in my own cool down if I take away the sound making and just uh, implement phase one as my phase four as well. I'm really excited to see what happens. Yeah, I'm excited too. And, and don't take my word for it, people. Do it. Test it. Try it and see what happens. Take the sound out of your phase one and your phase four and just do the work. Release, release, release. And once you feel that, oh, I feel, I feel released. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You all know what I'm talking about. You've had a massage and that's what you're looking for. It's that release. Um, then you're going to really start winning. You'll feel your body just let go. Oh, it's a great feeling. And that's where we want to both enter into our practice and leave our practice. Um, great. Super cool. I think that's everything that I wanted to share today. Is there anything else that uh, perhaps I missed or I have you think one more question off? that's, yeah. uh, again, a selfish one. Um, so if I haven't created weight or spoken much before a vocal practice, uh, yeah. although I'm not, even if I'm singing a heavyweight song, I want to, I enjoy starting off with like a hum or just something where I'm creating noise instead of like going straight for the weight, obviously. Uh, is that phase just one or phase okay. two? Because we're going to move into phase two, yeah, because we have to ask ourselves the, 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 guiding, the, the guiding philosophy, which is such an awesome question because people ask this all the time. Um, it's such a guiding, I mean, uh, the guiding principle, rather, is the goal, which phase one is to relax. Well, does making sound relax you? Well, in order to make sound, I have to tense my muscles, right, to do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's why we have to ask ourselves, well, where does that go? Well, it goes into the prep. Instead of phase one, it moves into the prep because it's an engagement. Cool. That's why. Yeah. So like a lot of people, um, a lot of people love making different sounds, whatever like that. And they're like, oh, it just helps me kind of get my voice going. Well, great. Get your voice going. That's part of the prep. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's I funny. think we get confused because it feels relaxing in a way compared yeah. to all the other sounds we make, but it is inherently still building tension just by creating noise. You got it. And that's why that first initial uh, manipulation, physical manipulation is, is key, that we can just let all this go. And then we start engaging it. Um, because what most of us do is we might have a tension here, or maybe you did some kind of choreography thing, and like you're, these mus this weird this muscle for some reason got really tight, and it's pulling on the side of your larynx, like, <laughs> and for some reason, like your voice is weird today. You didn't do anything with your voice, but it's weird. And what you'll find very quickly is you probably have some weird tension there and you start massaging out like, whoa, wow. Uh, yeah, and that's what a lot of people find. This is this will be a big one for for um, our our COVID-19 time is this. This particular posture, 
people leaning back in chairs a lot, what happens is your, your head wants to fall backwards. So these muscles here start to tighten and the brain isn't always very specific about which muscles it's using. It just says, I don't want the head to fall backwards. So it sends tension to all this area, including the muscles wrapped around your larynx, underneath your chin. And so some of you might feel like it's weird when you talk right now, and it's because you're starting to accrue these extra tensions and then you don't let go of them because you don't know you have them. Yikes. It's delightful. Love that. Isn't it delightful? Uh, fantastic. <laughs> yes. Amazing. I feel very excited. That's awesome. I'm yeah. glad we got to share that today. This is so cool. Awesome. Um, okay. Excellent. So next time we're diving, next time I see you, we're diving more into phase two and three, correct? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Out. Ooh, I'm very excited about that. Yes, awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so, Michael, I'll see you again in two weeks on One Voice Live. Next week, I'm interviewing Nick Eibler, another One Voicer and professional working actor, about his oh. vocal practice. Um, so we'll gain some tidbits and exercises that he has found helpful uh, for us to steal for our own. Um, and that'll be next Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. CT, and we will see you all there. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody.